Well, praise God. That song is really great. Um, Yeah, before we begin, let's just pray again. Father God, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that uh, you will bless everyone that hears this word today. Lord, we ask that we decrease, that you may increase in our lives. And Lord... Man, we just want to just enjoy the presence of you within our lives. And Lord, we want to uh, enjoy your benefits and the promises that you have for us. And Father God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Before I get on, uh, I want to share some testimonies. But for those who are here tonight at 6 o'clock tonight downstairs, uh, we're going to be, be talking about uh, rebellion strongholds. So it's a class on spiritual warfare. There's always uh, healings and deliverance that always follows, and sometimes during the teaching, um, because uh, you can't confine the movement of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes He just does what He does. So I like to kind of just follow instead of trying to get out and lead. But it's a good class. So if you're eager to learn, or if you know somebody that's sick, uh, I would recommend coming or bringing them. Also, on uh, starting April 2nd, which is Sunday evening at 6, uh, I'll be here with an open door. Uh, so we need to add another day because of, uh, the Saturdays are getting very full. So if somebody needs counseling, deliverance, you've got kids, you're sick, you can't get in to see me on an appointment, you can come Sunday night at 6 p.m. I'll be here. And uh, this song, 719, I got this really great sermon again. I actually shared on it and talked about it last night, but this is a key, man. 719, if my people's hearts are humbled. Unfortunately, in our life, sometimes we don't know what it takes to humble ourselves. I mean, if you're as anything like me, it took a lot. And for some of us, it takes a major traumatic experience or a disaster within our lives, a sick, an illness, a death, uh, nightmares, torment. It can be a number of things before you kind of wake up and say, hey, something isn't right. I'm going to church. I'm praying. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not living in sin anymore, but I still have all these symptoms of when my life was hell. And I don't understand it. And it's just simple. If my people's hearts are humbled and they pray and seek my face, if they turn away from evil, evil is wickedness. It's anything that goes against the word of God. It's complete rebellion and a lack of sense. So how do we understand it? Well, a lot of the times in life, we don't even dig into the word to study to show ourselves approved. So we go through society living in the training that we've been raised up in from the secular world, just as carnal Christians, not understanding that we're living in fear, doubt, unbelief, which in an essence is rebellion to the word of God. Fear is the opposite of faith. Satan's kingdom is ran off fear. God's kingdom is ran off faith. So we have to understand that, hey, if we're operating in fear, we're operating in rebellion and we are rejecting the word of God. He says he will not withhold the grace. God's grace is unconditional love and favor. His mercy is new each and every day. Hey, I I like to think that there was some points in my life that God's grace uh, was, you know, I was really soaking it up because I was so jacked up. But there was also points in my life to where I took his grace for granted. And we use the term greasy grace. In other words, I knew better, but I was still doing wrong. And it wasn't because I wanted to take it for granted. It was because there was a war within my members, like Paul said. And even though I wanted to do the things that were right, something within me was still warring against my desire to please the Father. And I found myself continuing to go back down a path that I really didn't want to go down. But the truth of the matter is, when I really got into it and examined myself, and much of us also, I found out that I still kind of like the sin. 
oh, I hated doing it. Well, I hated the condemnation that came after I did it. But it was a complete setup. The Bible says there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who, what? Walk after the Spirit, not in the flesh. So for a moment, I was getting tripped up, being enticed by something within me that was leading me astray and causing me to do things that, by definition, would not inherit the kingdom of God, according to Galatians 5. I wasn't my judge. I didn't have the final say. But I had to investigate and evaluate my own life and my own decisions and come to a conclusion as to why I was doing what I was doing. And the reality of it was, is, hey, I like doing it. Even though I didn't like the guilt that came with it, there was still something in me that wanted to do it. Oh, well, I went through deliverance. I repented from my sins. John the Baptist came and preached repent. Jesus' first message was repent. And man, repentance is the first key. We have to repent and turn from our wicked ways, whatever it is. If we have sicknesses, if we have diseases within our body, I talk about it all the time. A disease is a dis-ease in the body. We're praying for healing. We're praying to overcome these things, but we're not seeing the healing. We're not seeing the results. And then we believe the lie, oh, it's in God's timing. Oh, it's a thorn in my flesh. I said this last night. Hey, God's timing was thousands of years ago when he paid the penalty on the cross. By his stripes you are healed. It's past tense. It's not the thorn in your flesh to keep you humble. You're not out here the apostle, being the apostle Paul. Look at your fruit. Look at your life. That will tell you the type of tree that you've been. And if you think it's a blessing, I've said it before, let's all just come up here and get on our knees and pray to the Father to bless our family with this cancer, this arthritis, this diabetes, these night terrors. Let's just do it. And if it's that much of a blessing from God, wouldn't it be a sin to try to go to the doctor and get some medication to remove that sickness or disease from within our body? But yet many... And I'm not saying us, if it don't apply, let it fly. But in society, all of us has heard it. Oh, it's just my thorn in my side. It's just the way God keeps me humble. It draws me to him each and every day. He won't remove it, so I just know that he's the master of my life. It's a delusion. It's a lie. And yeah, sometimes the truth hurts. But remember, when Jesus came and brought forth the truth, it divided. It separated. And that's what it does. The word of God is... Living and active, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, and it divides. Boom! It separates. Now, I'm going to share with you a couple of things here. Some people that repented of some stuff. These are really neat testimonies, and understand that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't pick and choose who he heals. If he did, he would have favorites. God is no respecter of persons. What he did for the least, he'll do for the most. It doesn't matter. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, on the YouTube, you'll see a guy that got healed of, he was paralyzed from the waist down. This was just in the last month. Completely paralyzed. Slipped and fell on some ice. Severed his spine. 2% out of people with his spinal cord injury ever walk again or gain movement in his legs. 2%. I'm going to say that again, 2%. But when this guy didn't even know Jesus, he just reached out and he said, hey, man, I'm trying to get saved. I don't understand it. This man repented and cried out to God, and God's mercy and his grace touched him in a way that not only changed his life, but gave him a second chance on life. This man is batting 200%. Because he was obedient to the Lord. And you can see it in the video. God, his legs start to become alive. Now he's in rebuilt rehab, going through rehabilitation so he can walk. He was in a chair for over two and a half years, gained almost 200 pounds. So there's a recovery process that's got to take place because his body can't handle the weight that he put on. His hips are moving. His legs are moving. Oh, it's real. It's real. I mean, hey, I don't trust Google on a lot of things, but a, a video, you see it, and you watch the prayer, and this guy repented. Demons were flying out of him. And the Lord's mercy touched him in his grace, and his, his, his spinal cord was healed, 
2%. But when you got the Father and you're humbled, that percentage goes to 200%. You see, the Bible tells us in Matthew that He gave His disciples, learners of Christ, authority to heal all manner of disease, all manner of sickness. I want to say that again because I don't think you're catching it. All manner of disease. All manner of sickness. It doesn't matter if it's... It, it, it Look... And I got to be careful what I say because they'll ban me. But it doesn't matter if it's the pandemic we just went through. It doesn't matter what sickness, what illness, the sinus infection, the flu. It doesn't matter. All manner of disease, all manner of sickness. Now, yeah, there is a thing as the common cold. But our immune system should be working on such a level that these things don't affect us. And when we start to catch the common cold, we should push everything aside. And cry out, stand on the word of God, which is living and active. It must have the final say within our lives. It has to be the foundation that our life is built upon. We can't waver back and forth. Because then with every trial, every test, every storm that comes, when the waves beat harder on our boat, within our life, our body, guess what? We begin to sink. The Bible describes it as sinking sand. You'll be like Peter. You'll focus on the wind. You can't even see the wind. You'll focus on the ways and you'll begin to seek in your, your doubt, your fear, your unbelief. Another one. Uh, I like this one right here because I thought it was neat. The girl healed of asthma. Healed of asthma. It's called right there on this pew right here. Right here in this front pew. Healed and delivered of asthma. Right there. Right here. Right here. God is on the throne and He is moving. He is moving and He wants to move in your life all the time. And He wants to use you so other people can see His glorious manifestation of His love within their life. We just got to, what do you call it, radical faith? No. We just got to step out and just do something. I know two people that stopped using a walker. One guy we prayed for at another church, literally. We kicked the walker away from him, and they were carrying the walker out, and he walked out the door with his arms up praising Jesus all the way to the car. This guy was 80 years old. So when you believe the lie, hey, I'm getting older, and my body just, I have to have it. That's a lie. If that's the case, the, my, my man Carl over here, he don't need no walker. He's in his 80s. And if, in other words, if it was the truth, everybody in their 80s would be walking around with walkers. But it was a lie. The man repented for some stuff, cried out to the Lord, healed him. Another lady just sent us an email, prayed for her. She sent me an email. Hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm not using my walker for the first time in X amount of years. In her 60s, 62 I said, yeah, throw it in the trash. So what she did is she went to go pitch it. And she said a thought popped in her head. Hey, you don't even use that walker for your back. Even though it was healed, you use it for your knee and your hip. You see how the enemy tries to come in and steal, kill, and destroy? He's a master manipulator. She, took, she caught that thought. She took it captive. She, under, she waited against the Word of God and then brought it into the obedience of what God's Word said, which had the foundation within her life. And you know what she did? She tossed that thing in the back room. She running around the house and just talked to her the other day. She said, I don't use that walker. My hips feel better. My legs feel better. My back feels great. She said, I'm doing stretches. My body's not hurting. My spine feels free. Praise the Lord. This is for everybody. Uh, another lady, gluten allergy. Matter of fact, that one was pretty cool because it was the same girl that got healed with asthma. And we had nothing to, didn't even know about the allergy. Didn't even pray for it. But see, we don't serve a halfway God. He does exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within us. We step out in faith. We draw near to God. God is going to draw near to us. He just doesn't come in halfway. I said it before, man. He comes in like an 18... This is a bad example, but he's like an 18-wheeler driving through a large crowd of people. Hey, he's wiping some stuff out. 
I'm telling you, think about a tanker with somebody on top like a fireman spraying, spraying out the blood of Jesus all over the place. Hey, it's living and active. Uh, another one. Uh, oh, oh, right here. Miss Caroline prayed. We went and seen that movie, Come Out in Jesus' Name. She prayed for a lady that couldn't walk, could barely walk, couldn't stand up. Feet were twisted and legs were jacked up. I, I mean, I, it, it was a bad situation. We're doing deliverance on probably 75, 100 different people in the movie theater at once. Praise God. God is moving worldwide. Next thing you know, I look up, this lady's running around, up and down the aisles, arms up, praising Jesus. I can walk, I can walk, screaming. That's the God we serve. He wants to use you to be a testimony unto the lives of others. Healing is for everybody. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen to what he says here. Another one. A lady came. We prayed for her. Her gallbladder was loaded with stones. Loaded. Repented. I get this whole sermon here off, off this and the testimonies. It doesn't get any better than this. It, it, it doesn't. Why? Because this is authenticity of the Word of God. This is the truth of the Word of God. This is what confirms the Bible's Word when it says the Word went forth and healed them delivered them out of their bondage of sin. This lady went back to the doctor. I guess they was going to have to do something, remove her gallbladder. I don't know. But when she went back, I guess the schedule for the surgery, I, I really didn't hear anything after she said, hey, I just forgot to tell you that uh, my gallbladder was loaded with stones and I went back to the doctor. There was zero stones in it. Zero. Zero. What did she repent from? Unforgiveness and bitterness. And we've heard the term in the Bible, a gall of bitterness. Let's go on to a couple really neat things. Pain in the lower back and knee. Uh, oh, just yesterday. Uh, oh, one more too. Let me tell you one more. A little boy came in and got prayer. The parents brought him, just showed up with their two kids. They went through deliverance and prayer, and this little boy barely spoke, didn't talk very much. Uh, got delivered of a mute spirit. This kid would not stop talking, hugging us and saying how he loved Jesus. All the way to the front door and down the sidewalk, turning around, talking about, I love you. I love Jesus. Three-year-old little boy, childlike faith. Little baby in here yesterday, nine months old. When she would walk, she would stand on her toes because they said her Achilles tendons, I guess, weren't long enough. And the Lord touched her right there and her tendons grew and she was standing on her feet. And then they said her, her chin was crooked and you could look at it and see it. And we prayed for it instantly. You could see her jaw. I tell somebody, I can only describe it as if you ever slid a slot open in a door and looked out the window. As I was praying for it, I can't even describe it. There was no thinking. There was no nothing. I just grabbed her face and started praying, and the Lord was so faithful. You could literally feel her chin just shifting over. There's no difference between that nine-month-old kid, that three-year-old boy, and you. Or anyone that's listening online, there's no difference. There's no difference. None. I have a few scriptures here, and I'm just going to read through them. Because I could sit here and tell you, and these are the things we've seen in the past month. Since last time that I've been here. And there's more. I'm not trying to stand here and saying, hey, look, we've got some secret sauce or anything. No, that's not what we're saying. We're just saying that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you will humble yourself and repent, if you will investigate yourself and receive the counsel that's being sent forth and cry out to God and believe His Word and let it have the final authoritative position, the foundation within your life. 
the work that He can do within your life is, oh, your eye hath not seen, nor has your ear heard, nor will even begin to enter into the heart the things that He has prepared for you. Oh, you have no idea. No idea. No idea. And there's a move worldwide by the Father right now. Worldwide. It doesn't matter. I don't watch social media. But every time I do see something, it's a revival here, a revival here, thousands here, thousands here, thousands here, crying out to the God that we serve, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Psalms 41.3 says this, The Lord sustains him on his sickbed, and in his illness you restore him to what? Full health. Full health. Not some health, full health. Psalms 147.3, He heals the brokenhearted. 3 John 1.2, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. So now we see a direct link and correlation between our soul and health. Do you see that? As it goes well with our soul, that we will be in good health. If you have problems in your body, it's a direct result from what's in the soul. Now, I'm not saying if you fell and you got hurt or you have some trauma that your soul's all jacked up. There is medical issues. You cut yourself. You don't take care of it. You get infected. If I fall, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even saying that in the name of Jesus. If somebody slips and falls and gets in a car wreck and bumps their head or hurts themselves, uh, there can be medical trauma, and they may need what's called a creative miracle. I seen a lady on a Zoom that had a big dent in her skull from a car accident, and she's they're praying, uh, and this lady starts screaming up and down and said her skull literally filled in in the hole that was on top of her head. We was talking about it on the Zoom call last night. The girl's name was Jessica. I'll never forget it. I was just praying for her. She's literally hysterical. Deaf ears will be opened. You understand? The blind will see. The lame will walk. God is no respecter of persons. Here we go. Exodus 23, 25. I will take away sickness from among you. You see that? I will take away. Only God can remove the sickness. I was reading in Psalms, I was going to read this today, and it says it's vanity to trust in man. And it clicked. Man, we trust in man, the creation of God, more than we trust in God who created man to take away our sickness. Oh, and everybody's got a logical excuse for why they're sick or what's going on. They've got a logical reason why they're rejecting God's word. Oh, well, you just know this happened, this happened. Hey, I don't care, dude, if you were in the burn pits in Iraq or you got in a car accident. The Bible says that God can heal, period, and that he will heal. We have to renew our mind in such a sense that it transforms us. By the renewing of my mind. By the renewing of our mind. The Word of God is living and active. We have to hide it in our hearts so that we don't sin against Him. We have to be doers of the Word and not just hearers. And I'm not talking about just on Sunday. I'm not just talking about when you say, hey, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, all the time. We comfort others, what, with the same comfort we've been comforted with? Jeremiah 30, 17, I will restore you to health and, oh, and heal your wounds. Right, there's another one. Deuteronomy 32, 39, I will heal, declares the Lord. I mean, I don't, I mean, I got a few more, but I don't think it can get much clearer from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I will, I will, I will, but often we are our own worst enemy. Oh, I worked hard my whole life. I've got a bad back. Yeah, you keep saying that. Life and death in the power of the tongue. You're speaking a curse on yourself. The Bible says in James, blessings and curses should not proceed out of the same mouth. The sweet water and bitter water flow from the same tap, the source. No. Oh, my back's killing me. Oh, say, dude. 
It might not be killing you today, but 20 or 30 years from now, you'll be walking with a walker. Oh, I've, had, I've had back problems my whole life. I, I mean, you might think I'm, I'm, I'm making light of the situation, but no, this is true, man. This isn't a joking matter. We have to be attentive to what we say. We don't get a free pass in the spirit world. You confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. You accept Him and invite Him into your life. You ask Him to lead you and guide you from this day forward, and then you serve sin? You think you're going to get a free pass after you just switch sides? Ah, oh, they're out there blowing the whistle on you. Hey, whoop, I can't whistle, but hey, hey, we got one right here. They're watching pornography. They're cheating on their spouse. Hey, they're living in fear. Hey, they're smoking pot. They're cursing themselves. They just said they had a bad back. They said it runs in their family. We got them. We got them. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Oh, man, they load up in the truck. They're coming full force for you. I call it their long game plan. You might not feel the effects today. Hey, 10, 20 years from now, you will. And I'm just saying, man, we got to start making some changes in our lives. Every time I'm up here, it seems like this is what I'm preaching. I don't know why. But I'm saying, man, that Jesus loves us. We have to be doers of the word. And hey, if you don't think it applies, no problem. Let it fly. But I've yet to come across anybody in their 60s, 70s, 80s, nine months old, 90s, that's ever stopped learning from this book. Ever. Matter of fact, we don't stop until we're up with the Father. And if you think you know it all, well, then I would say, hey, dude, Satan thought he knew it all, and he got booted out of heaven like a bolt of lightning for pride. Dangerous situation. Let me read a few more here. Philippians 4.19, God will supply our every need according to his riches and glory. Well, what is God's riches and glory? Well, healing, deliverance, salvation, it's a full package deal. It's, it's not always about demons. It's about saving your soul also. But there is benefits that come with it. You are a joint heir now. As you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, you become an heir. You're a son. You've been adopted into the kingdom of righteousness. You are entitled to all the blessings of God. All the inheritance. If your father's a millionaire and he dies and you're the only relative, guess where it goes? You inherit the wealth. Jesus is living and active. He's not on the cross. But when we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of righteousness, we inherited all the blessings of God. We inherited all these things. And he tells us that, hey, this even comes with benefits. What are these benefits? Well, hey, if you got insurance, you go to the doctor to get healed because you're sick. That's a benefit of a job. Or applying through society for it. That's a benefit. It's a health benefit. Our benefits come from heaven. Do, do you hear me? Hey, I'm not saying doctors are bad. That's not what I'm saying. But if you, I'm telling you, Hey, I'm not going. I'm just, I'm not going. I'm not doing it. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm, I'm not doing it, man. I'm not doing it. Why am I doing it? Because I know my God is faithful. And what I see him doing, the lives of others, he'll do for me too. He'll do for me too. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. I'm almost done here. Listen to what he says here. Listen to this. Listen right here. This is powerful. Proverbs. Pay attention to what I say. Oh, my guts. Hey, pay attention. Listen up. This is, what, this is the word. This ain't coming from my mouth. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. 
Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those that find them and oh, health to one's whole body. Hallelujah. Praise God. For all the questions that you have in life, right here is the antidote, the key. Hey, pay attention to what I'm telling you. My words are living and active and they are life to all those that find them. But not only life to them, but health to your whole body. My goodness, that's a benefit. Second Chronicles. If we repent, my people who are called by their name shall repent and turn from their wicked ways. If they shall humble themselves, I will hear their cry and I will heal their land. That's what it says. Second Chronicles, I think it's chapter, I don't know, might be seven or something. I'm not a theologian. James 5, 6, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. A prayer of a desperate person, the requirements of God is a broken heart and a crushed spirit. When you're desperate and you're broken, You'll cry out to God. You'll conf- hey, whatever, man. I'm, I'm examining myself. I got a problem. But a lot of the times in life, we focus on the end result instead of the, the, the whole situation that led up. In other words, a lady with the issue of blood. What do we, when we teach it, what do we say? Oh, she went to doctors for 12 years. She just touched the hem of his garment and was healed instantly. That's all we remember of this story. We, we remember the end result. But, so the question is asked, why when these others, faith healers in this, they would walk up and, wow, they were healed instantly. Why was the baby healed instantly? Hey, most of us don't understand the trial that the lady went through with the issue of blood for 12 years. Most of us don't know the trials that are going on behind the scenes that that baby's parents have been going through. Both sets of children. We only look at the end result because we live in a microwave society. You can't bake a whole cake without the ingredients. There's a process of dying to oneself that's got to take place. We have to come to the end of our own ropes. This word has to be everything within our lives. If the doctor, if the plumber tells you, hey, your leak's over here. I've been stuck on this for like a week, two weeks, three weeks. Hey, there's a leak right here. Well, I thought it was over here. No, 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 it's up here, man. Well, I thought it was going to be a cheap fix. No, it's thousands. If you don't pay for it, it's going to flood your whole house, ruin everything. You ain't going to be able to live here. They're going to condemn it. Water's coming through the roof. Oh, my gosh. Let me get my check. Do you take plastic? This guy can't even finish talking in your right trying to swipe the card. You didn't even go up and investigate it. You didn't go look for yourself. You knew he was a trained professional and did what he did. For a living, so you trusted him at his word. But yet we doubt God and his word. But then we happily walk around and say, yeah, I die, I'm going to heaven. I die, I'm going to heaven. Well, if we're that confident in that, why can't we be that confident in his word about his deliverance, his healings, his miracles? And the reality that he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. If we can trust the plumber, my God. Have you seen some of these plumbers? I mean, man, good men. They're sometimes just rugged and rough. But we take them at their word. We can't even see in the wall. I'm looking at the wall. How does this guy even know that there's a leak inside? He doesn't even... Oh, you see the drywall right here? It's a little different shade. And you can see this little bead of paint coming down here. And you see right there? Oh, yeah, that, that, that little that grayish color up there. No, dude, I don't see any of that, but okay. Man, God has given us an instruction manual for our entire life of not only how to live our life, but how to overcome the effects of sin and the enemy from within our lives. We have to pick it up, man. We can't just come to church on Sunday or Bring your kids or your family here to be healed. We, there has to be something that takes place a lot of the times prior to this. Even the man that was healed with the paralyzed legs, he was searching for years, he said, 20 years almost in prison. 
And he said, for the last few years, man, I just can't seem to get it. I want to be saved. I want to be saved, but I can't understand it. I, I don't, I don't, I can't, I just, it doesn't make sense. I, I've read the Bible. I've done this. I don't, I don't catch it. It's not sinking in. Years. Years. Hey, that's real simple, man. It's just childlike faith. Let's repent, dude. Come on. The Bible says, I showed him, the Bible says if we believe in our heart, confess in our mouth, turn from our sins, we'll, we'll be saved. Are you still, no, nah, man, I'm stuck in a wheelchair living in a nursing home. There's not much sin that he can do going on there. Nothing's, I mean, paralyzed, waist down. Well, that's, check, there we go. Let's move on to the next one. Let's start praying. Man, the power of God is amazing. Psalms 107, 19, he, sets his, he sent his word and healed them. Psalms 10, 3, 2 through 4. Praise the, here we go, confirms what I said. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Come on, these are heavenly benefits. Benefits from the kingdom of God. Benefits filled with glory and righteousness. The majesty set on high. These are the benefits that I want. This is way better than Blue Cross Blue Shield or Humana. This is the real deal. Do you understand me? This is your real insurance policy. This is it. And guess what? Man, you can make a withdrawal and get healed anytime. He's eager to sweep into your life. He's up there waiting. Oh, there's my daughter. She cried out to me. I'm right there. I pick, let me get her. Let me get her right there. Oh, she's crying. Let me pick her right up. Come on. I love you. I'm right here. He's up there sitting, just waiting. Look. Man, where, who's going to, who's it going to? Ah, here I am, right here. I hear your cry. That's what he says. Says, I cried out to the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me. He heard, man, he's eager. He has a heart of compassion and mercy and love. What's a benefit? Right here, he forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. There's another benefit. He redeems your life from the pit. There's another benefit. And crowns you with love and compassion. My God, that's everything I just said. So don't take my word for it. You don't have to believe anything that comes out of my mouth. Just believe this. What is on this paper? Well, go look it up for yourself. Psalms 10. Matthew 4, Jesus healed the demon-possessed, those who were ill with various diseases and in severe pain, seizures, and the paralyzed. I've seen multiple people get healed of epilepsy. Multiple. Tourette's. Guy went to medic got medication for 48 years for Tourette's. <laughs> 48 years, man. Can you imagine that? He cried out to the Lord, repented, fought hard, examined himself, got that spirit out of his brain. Guess what? Within nine months, he was not only healed and delivered, but his, his wife is even saved now, serving the Lord. 48 years, the enemy kept him in bondage. And within nine months, the father radically changed his whole life. Radically. Matthew 10, 1, he heals every disease and every sickness. Matthew 9, Jesus went in the towns and synagogues, proclaiming the good news and healing every diseased and all the sickness. Amen. If you know, I guess what I'm trying to do today is is get you to ask yourself if there's something in here or something in you that's questioning what the Bible says, even trying to put logic to it. 
it's, it's not from God. Childlike faith doesn't logically try to figure everything out. Do you understand? It takes it at face value. You think I'm wrong? We all got kids. Most of us do anyways. And if you tell a kid, hey, you know what? That's a bad, that's a bad analogy. If you was ever married, you have a spouse, or you had kids, and you're, you told your wife or you told your spouse, hey, I, I put $20 in your pocket so when you go to school or when you go to work, you got lunch money. They get up, they put their coat on, they head on to school, they head on to work. They don't run and go look in the closet and make sure the money's there before they leave. They take you at your word. They take you at your word. But yet we we don't take God at his word and, and we see he raised Jesus from the dead. My gosh. We trust more in man than we do the Father in the Bible. That's got to change. I'm trying to get you guys to see here that, hey, everything, again, that's going contrary to the Bible, to, your, to, to the Spirit, is not from God. Sickness is not your blessing. You are the temple of God. God dwells within you, and He wants His temple holy, undefiled, and clean. He can't use you if you're all gimped up and sick. So that means that the sickness is coming from the enemy to try to prevent God from using you. We have to weigh every thought and bring it into the obedience of God. Do you understand? Massive car accident. I think it was car accident, right? Massive car accident. Dead, 42-day coma. Oh, wait. There's more. There's more. You got want something too? Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's that's a heart of love and compassion. And if you think I'm joking on the asthma, uh, not to throw her business out there, but she's sitting right here. Right here. Yeah. Is anybody else? So there's a couple. What what's your name? Yeah. Jennifer. Jennifer, you look like a lady, I know. That's why I asked. Uh what was her name? I mix it up. Christy or son? Christy. I call her Sonia. You look like this lady that come here named Sonia. And that's what I thought. Up here I can't really see very well. Um, but she got healed, was said superpower hearing aids in, and she she couldn't hardly hear. 
and literally, if you go on our, our channel, you'll see a video of her smashing her hearing aids. She literally was healed. Her ears were healed. Opened up. Boom. And something that's neat about that is the enemy tried to come in and trick her. And she would go to work as she still held on to these hearing aids, knowing that she was healed. And she would put them in. And the demons in her brain, bless her heart, the lying spirits told her, hey, you're doing it so your boss can see. So that way he, he thinks you're listening. Do you see the lie? She had long hair just like you. He can't see her ears. This guy didn't know if she had her hearing aids in or not. But it was a lie. I said, man, dude, you're healed. Everybody's in there telling her, hey, you're healed. We're whispering to you. Let's go, let's go home and, you know, maybe I'm just rough with it. Throw your walker away. Crush your hearing aids. She, I said, that's what I would do. I can't tell you what to do, but this is what I would do. That's, that's what she did. Boom, I think uh, it was Caroline. Miss Caroline was healed of a dairy allergy. Is that correct? Is that it? Yeah. Lactose. If anybody knows anything about that, that's miserable. So uh, The little boy, and I'm going to end, I'm sorry, but I want to share this little boy that I shared about that had the tumors in his lungs. Uh, Leon was his name. Eight aggressive tumors, and they were considered very, could be very cancerous, eight in his lungs, eight of them, miraculously healed, <sighs> upper and lower lobes, both lungs, completely gone, <sighs> it's the power of God, man, so well, hepatitis C, me, we are all walking miracles. Every one of us. But God's got more for you. He's got more. Maybe I'm greedy, but I want it. You know what I'm saying? I want it. I mean, Elijah, he said, I think it was Elijah or Elijah. I can't pronounce it, but you know the story. He said, oh, I just want a double portion of his spirit. If you ask me, that was a mistake. What do you mean, Brother Josh Al's mistake? What if he limited God? What if God would have poured out a triple, a quadruple portion upon this man's life? And all he asked for was a double portion. I don't want a double portion. I want everything he's got. Everything. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, he got a double A. I'm not saying the man wasn't the man. He was the man. He was doing awesome things. But what if that... You understand, uh, Lord, I just want a double portion. That's humble. I get it. But, hey, I, I trust you, Father. I just want all that you have for me. Because what I, what's, what's not for me, you know, is best for me. And he knows better than I know. Let's stand and pray. I know I went a little long today. I... Uh, I apologize, but not really, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, because just the testimonies and the love of God, I mean, it's it. And hey, like I said, man, you know, uh, this is where we're at. I'm here every third Sunday. Google it, mosthopedeliverance.com, or it's Walnut Hills Baptist Church, 2386 Kemper Lane, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm also here on the first Sunday, 6 p.m. Come fellowship. Come get a touch from God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we just humbly bow before your throne, Lord, and just say, Lord, remove any unclean thing from within our lives. We come to you, Lord, in full humbleness and surrender. Lord, rolling back away from the stone that's protecting the areas of hidden sin within our lives. Lord, we... We want everything that you have for us, Lord. We want to experience and tell others of the blessings and the benefits that are found within your word. Lord, we pray and just ask that you use us as a living example 
As he said to go ye therefore and tell all nations, teach them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, immersing them in your love, teaching them whatsoever things I've commanded you and the things that we've observed, Lord. We observe healings. You've commanded us to be a doer of the word. Lord, we're just saying, hey, send us. And if, if, if we can't go, Lord, send them here. I'm not no Babe Ruth father, but I promise you, we'll, we'll take a swing for the fences. Help us, Lord. Lead us and guide us this day. Bless our tithes and offerings. Bless us tonight. Bless this church. Bless this ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us all together say, Amen, Amen. If anybody needs counseling or prayer after service, just come see me. I'll be happy to speak with you and talk to you. I think Ms. Susan's got a couple of songs for us.